So the thing about this year's NHL entry draft, it's on Wednesday and Thursday. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and so the first round being on a Wednesday means that, well, overrated or underrated is getting trumped. And it's getting pushed to Tuesday. Yeah. Have to do it on Tuesday instead. So it is an overrated or underrated Tuesday on Canucks Central. Hit the music, Ben. You know the game. We play it once a week, usually on Wednesdays. Usually. You give us a topic. We debate if they are overrated, underrated, or perfectly rated. Uh, for example, Nate Danielson. Overrated, oh, underrated, or perfectly rated? Uh, given the reaction to our mock draft on Twitter. Where we and, selected Nate Danielson to the Canucks at 11th overall. And also the text inbox. Mm -hmm. I'd actually say he's underrated because of how overrated people seem to think Nate Danielson is. Because yeah. usually you go you yin and yang, you, you, people are probably going too far the other way on it. So I'd actually say underrated. Mm. I, uh, I feel... I feel underrated as well. If you would have asked me this uh, not so long ago, I might have said overrated. Mm -hmm. But the more tape that I've watched of Nate Danielson, the more I am enjoying the player and the the traits. I've I'm a I've adopted Sats like vocabulary yeah. because we spend so much time <laughs> together and talking so much draft. I mean, I, I hope honestly, like as much as I love talking draft, I hope that next year we don't talk as much draft. Uh, during the season. Mm -hmm. That might feature in uh, overrated and underrated. Ooh, we'll very see. good, very good. Uh, let's start with uh, this one. From Sad, the Canucks 2023-24 schedule. Okay. Overrated or underrated? All right. So I think the schedule is fascinating. Okay. Because I've gone through it and looked at looked through with a uh, Schedule fine... talk. It is. Underrated schedule talk, yes. It's fun. I mean, schedule talk's fun, but we, we didn't feel right to lead the show and, and spend a big portion of the show today with all the draft stuff going yep. on and, and trades talking about the schedule. We can all look at the schedule. We can always yep. talk about the schedule at any point of the season we want. Nonetheless, it works for overrated and underrated. I'd actually say it's underrated. Sure, you, it looks bad, right? You have, uh, you know, four big road trips, a five-gamer, a four-gamer, a seven-gamer, another five-gamer. They have nine back-to-backs, Dan. Nine! Yeah. But here's 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 the cool thing about the schedule. The nine-game homestand, which I mm -hmm. guess could be scary or whatever, you have a lot of games backloaded at home. So if you're playing well and in the race, you have a lot of home games, which is, which is a lot of fun usually at the end of a season. But those nine back-to-backs, one is on home ice in the first month of the season. Mm -hmm. None of them... Only two require a flight more than two hours. All the other ones are either a, a 90 minutes or less flights or in the same city. Wow. So the back-to-backs are not that onerous. Yeah. And even just at, like, nine seems like a big number. That is a smaller number than what the Canucks usually have. It's usually in the teens. Yeah, sometimes in the teens. Well, sometimes a 12 little bit. or 13. Sometimes even less, but it yeah. kind of depends. But it's not bad. And also, the, the schedule, like, it looks when you look at it in terms of, like, the early parts of the season. Yep. And the main reason why the Canucks uh, are going on the road early, and, mm -hmm. and Joey Canwood gave me a call about this earlier. He's like, he gave me some advice. You know, we always say, look. He said, look at the uh, Rogers Arena uh, events calendar. Mm -hmm. They have a lot of concerts in, in October, <laughs> and that kind of tells you why they're on the road to start the season so much. Ah, all you got to do is look. All you got to do is look. Good advice from our good friend Joey. Uh, schedule talk, underrated. Next one from Roan. Prospect development for the Canucks since 2011. Overrated or underrated? Well, it can't be overrated because nobody's rating it. <laughs> the prospect development has been bad. Yeah. Prospect development uh, in general as a, as, a, as a thing, overrated or underrated? Uh, I'd say underrated because of this market, how poor they've been in, in yeah. developing prospects. Cause, but I do think there is only so much you can do. I think a lot of it comes down to like individuals and what decisions they they make yeah. in life and how yep. they handle life between the age of 18 and 22, 23. And that's usually going to determine yep. you know, where you go. I think that's a bigger factor. But that's why teams value those character you know evaluations yeah. so much. And, and uh, they value them, but they're also like so difficult to yes. nail down because somebody can tell you all the right things. Yes. In a first meeting, you can put on a brave face. You can you can be who you want them 
to see you as, but how long can you uphold yeah. that? How many job interviews have you tried to like put on your, uh, you know, your Sunday best and, yeah. and try to look your best and all exactly. those types of things? It's a difficult thing. So I, I do think there is a lot of uncertainty, but given how poor this organization has been historically and how they've wasted resources and not spent enough resources, yeah. I'd say you have to meet a baseline and the Canucks haven't met a baseline enough. And hopefully they are now. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's underrated as, yeah. a, as a concept. Prospect development is underrated. Uh, October, uh, Morgan Wallen, October 3rd. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's, I think there's eight shows in Wu-Tang October. Wu-Tang Clan is, uh, and Nas are uh, October 16th. There's a Pink Tour. She's got a couple of uh, events. Iron Maiden. And there's going to be some big time Rogers Arena events. Yeah. All right. Next go. one. All you got to do is look. All you got to do is look. All you got to do is look at the events <laughs> schedule at Rogers Arena. <laughs> Uh, next one, overrated, underrated, the haul the Jets got for Pierre-Luc Dubois. Okay, so I said this earlier in the show. I know there's going to be a lot of people that are like, well, they got L.A. got the best player in the deal, and Winnipeg took a bunch of guys. They're never going to get the upside that they need out of the players that they got. They didn't get an elite prospect or anything like that. They just took NHL-ready talent. There's always going to be people that that don't love that. Cool. Great. Winnipeg is not looking for that. They weren't looking for that. They made it very clear that they're looking for NHL-ready talent. They want players that are going to come to Winnipeg and help them right now, help them continue to be competitive next year and potentially make another playoff appearance. And if I'm judging them on that, on that being their concept, their idea of what they need to get in a Pierre Luc Dubois trade, they did pretty good here. I think they did. I, I think they did well as well. I'd say so underrated. underrated. I'd yeah. say underrated too. And the thing to keep in mind, I don't think anybody was offering them a top ten pick for PLD. Yeah. Or top twelve pick. You're not getting that. Well, there was like only how many teams that you know he wanted to go to anyways exactly and even so you weren't you know getting that in return so what were you looking at at the deadline with him potentially a first round pick like the 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 one that Canucks got 17th overall somewhere like that best case yeah and maybe a prospect you like and that's a long range kind of you know trade that you make but with a pick you know and that's the best case but if you're getting a late first round pick Filardi's a better talent than that Kupari's as good as talent as you get there both younger players and I don't know about Ayafalo I can take it or leave it but he can help you at the very least Getting a second round pick as well. I don't know. I like the return for uh, the Winnipeg Jets. People might call me crazy, but like I, Kupari's got nine goals in 130 games, and I love the player. <laughs> He's good defensively. He's played 130 NHL games. He has nine goals, and I'm like, I love this guy. I watch him play. He's like functional hockey player. It right helps. shot. There you go. Has size. Plays good at both ends. Can PK already. Like, you know, if he finds some offensive potential, then. You know, you're looking at a guy that is a solid third-line center and can potentially even be more than that. 